What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, I've been transforming this prefab metal carport style building into a full blown shop that I can work on whatever I want in. I've been doing this all on a budget. Quick update from last video. We got the spray foam insulation in. Everything we've done to get to this point is we have the lights installed. Uh, we have six high bay UFO lights. They're 200 watts. Uh, got them off Amazon. I'll put the link down below in the description. Uh, we got a ceiling fan in, my powered garage door opener, and then we have a cable vent up in the top and we'll wire up to a thermostat. If you're wondering why the sidewalls are not spray foamed, I went over all of that in the last video. So if you're confused, go back, watch that video. I'll post a card up in the top. I'll have a link down below in the description. I'll probably answer all of your questions. But anyhow, the topic of this video is I'm gonna be taking this normal plain Jane concrete that you see here on the floor and I'm gonna be turning it into this fully sealed concrete that gives off that like professional polished concrete look. Not only does this stuff look pretty sweet, it'll also protect the concrete from letting oil and stuff sink into it. It'll make easy cleanup with antifreeze, oil, water, anything that drips off the vehicles. And you can't lie, it does look pretty badass. With all of that being said, there is some supplies I have to go get in order to finish the floor off. So what I'm gonna do is hop in probably the Jeep and I'm gonna run it down and uh, get everything I need to completely seal and transform this floor, hopefully. So I just got back with the rest of everything I should need to complete this. So what I went and got was 18 inch roller pan. I'm gonna roll all the seal on. So instead of being bent over, I got a stick handle Johnny, the actual roller attachment for the nap roller. I got me some Mean Green Super Strength. This stuff's supposed to be pretty solid for like oil spots and like where them acorns sat on the floor and the oils got out. So that's what I'm gonna use to scrub it. And then I just went and got a little cheap broom to kind of scrub it and agitate all the spots on the floor. The surface cleaner, I did not buy. A buddy of mine let me borrow that. He has never used it, so I'm gonna give him a good review on it. So that should be everything I need to seal this entire floor. Minus the actual seal itself because it's in the mail and it's supposed to be here tomorrow. So fingers crossed it actually shows up on time. And then I forgot, I, uh, I got a little foam brush to kind of go around the outside perimeter and then around everything that's on the ground over here. But anyhow, I'm going to prep the floor, clean everything today, and then that way it'll dry the rest of today, it'll dry all day tomorrow, and then if that stuff shows up tomorrow, when I get home from work, I can lay the seal down, get it down, let it dry for a couple days. They say 48 hours before you drive on it, after like four hours you're allowed to walk on it. So I'll get it down, let it dry for a couple days, pull everything back in here, and then hopefully this weekend we can start the walls and painting the ceiling and everything else. So I guess how I'm gonna attack this first is I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna sweep the entire building out, and then I'll go through with probably a drywall scraper or something. I'm gonna do all the cracks, kind of just run it through it and try to get the crap out of them, all the dirt and stuff that's gathered down in there. And then I'll grab the leaf blower, I blow the entire building out, so that should get pretty much everything out of here. And then I'll go through with the mean green, all these oil spots. I don't know what this is, some more oil spots over here and then all these specks on the ground over here are all acorns that I grabbed for the deer they sat here some of them fell out or leaked through the bag it got crap all over the ground so we're pretty much gonna scrub all the oil spots after everything's scrubbed then I'll grab the surface cleaner attach it to the power washer and I'll go around the whole floor try to get it as clean as possible if there's any spots like I hit again I'll just use the normal power washer blow it out and then my plan is, is it should be dry when I get home from work tomorrow I'll grab the leaf blower one last time blow everything up. Yeah, so I'm gonna go grab the broom real quick, start sweeping.
All right, so just got done leaf blowing it out. Um, as you guys seen, I hit it with the shop vac, went through all the cracks with the shop vac, which actually cleared them up pretty good. And then I leaf blew everything out. I, uh, I probably didn't need to sweep. I probably didn't need to go around the perimeter with the vacuum. But in my mind, I was thinking the more stuff I get out and cleaned out, the less I gotta worry about blowing out, if that makes sense. Don't know if it's a good idea, whatever. It took me a couple minutes longer. So what I'm gonna do now is get the uh, simple green or mean green or whatever the hell it's called. I'm gonna take that, pretty much just pour it on all the spots where there's stains. I don't know if this like ring where I had my tires for the mega cab, the stock tires were sitting here. Um, but I don't know if it's gonna get like all the tire marks out, but I'm pretty much just gonna scrub all the spots anywhere where it's darker, see what I can do with it. If it takes it out, that's awesome. If not, then whatever, so be it. And then I'll get the surface cleaner out go grab the power washer and then I'll do the whole floor. And then ideally we should be done with the cleaning and the prep work. Some of you are probably asking like, hey, don't you have to etch floors before you seal them? So the product I'm gonna be using is called Eagle Seal. I'm almost positive that's American made company. On their website though, they say that the floor, the concrete just has to be porous enough to absorb stuff. So if you are worried about your floor not being able to absorb stuff, all you gotta do is take a little bit of water, drop it on there, 15 minutes later, come back. If it soaks in, then it's porous enough to accept the seal. Mine is just power troweled. I mean, you can see the marks on the floor from it. I already know that it accepts moisture and water. Uh, I mean, as you can see, when anything that gets dropped on here, if you guys watch the videos, it kind of soaks into it. So I don't have a problem with it. The only people that are going to have a problem is if you have a polished floor. It might already be sealed up enough just from it being kind of polished that it won't absorb and it won't accept the sealer. So if you want to check it, just put a little water down, wait 15 minutes. If it absorbs into it, you're good. But anyhow, I'm going to quit yapping. I'm going to grab this mean green, whatever it's called, and I'm going to start scrubbing all the spots on the floor. So I don't know if I really showed this stuff. This is what it is, mean green. I got this at Menards, heavy duty cleaner, super strength cleaner and degreaser. It says right on it, removes tough grimes and grease. So this is what I'm gonna use. You can get, uh, Simple Green, I'm pretty sure is like the same thing. This is just different brand that Menard sells. But this is what I'm gonna use to try to attack all the oil spots and stains in the concrete. All right, I let the simple green sit on there for a little bit and I actually went through and re-scrubbed all the spots I scrubbed the first time. Uh, anyways, it didn't work as good as I thought. I mean, you can see like the oil spots, they're still there for the most part. I mean, top layer should be cleaned off enough to not really mess with the seal, I'm hoping. And I actually went through and I sprayed everything else out with the garden hose, you guys already seen that. The tire marks didn't come out quite as good as I had hoped they would. I mean, I feel like they got cut down a little bit but whatever they're gonna be sealed into the floor now be a good uh, conversation starter because people will probably be like one day like hey what are these tire marks from first brand new truck i ever bought so whatever glass half full kind of guy anyways i probably didn't need to spray all the simple green out i just figured i'd try to get it out of the way that way it's not sudden up or anything but what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna go grab the power washer out of the other garage put the surface cleaner on and just go over the entire floor. Even though there might still be some stains, tire marks, like the rubber from the tires, whatever, the surface will be clean. At least I'm doing the prep work like I'm supposed to. And also thinking back, I probably should have sealed the floors before I had them spray foam because there wouldn't be as much crap kind of floating around. Uh, ideally, I should have did this right when I got the slab put down before they even put the building up. But 2020 vision, uh, you know for next time. So if you guys are doing this process, and you're doing one of these metal prefab buildings, maybe uh, seal your slab right once it's done and it's cured before they come put the building up. Save you a little bit of time. So 
just got done squeegeeing everything towards the drain in the center, kind of hoping it just helps it dry a little bit quicker, which I think it is. So I guess recap, I swept it, I blew it out, I vacuumed, I power washed it, scrubbed some spots with that uh, mean green stuff. I think this is as clean as the floor is going to get. And I don't know if just because it's like drying, but I'm, I mean, it looks a lot lighter in color than what it did when I started. So maybe it was dirtier than what I thought. I probably could have got away with just blowing it out and then calling it a day. But I mean, I wanted, I had the stuff to clean it as good as I could. So I figured I'd take advantage of it and just do it. As you can see, all of the cracks, there is nothing in any of them. So I mean, overall the floor is clean. Yeah, I mean, you can touch it and there's, it's like it's brand new. So I'm gonna leave the door open, leave the window open, uh, let this completely dry out. Tonight I'll come back out, pick everything up that I have out there and then I'll shut the door. Hopefully when I get home from work tomorrow, which it should be completely dry, I'll have my seal here and then we'll seal the floors. So you guys will see me in like two seconds, but I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so it is actually two days later. It sounds like they ended up starting to ship my seal to the wrong location or something, so they had to correct that and then make it to me. So it didn't show up on time like I thought. I don't know if it's UPS's fault or Home Depot's fault, but them. Anyhow, this is the seal. It showed up today. Kids napping, so I'm gonna try to knock this out real quick. Like I said, Eagle Seal, Armor Seal, Interior, Exterior, Gloss, Concrete Sealer. It's a urethane modified acrylic, water-based. On their website, they pretty much made it sound like that it's gonna be great for garages. It said uh, hot tire pickup, um, chemicals that fall from vehicles, oil, coolant, water, etc. said great for garage and shop use. So that's why I went with this. They also mentioned that you're not supposed to dump this stuff directly onto the floor. You're supposed to pour it into a tray is why I got the paint tray back here. Um, also, you can use a sprayer for this, but I felt like it'd be cheaper to get the big 18 inch roller instead of buying a sprayer that's good for chemicals. Anyhow, like I said, I'm kind of on a time crunch here. I'm gonna try to at least get one coat down. And then after I lay the kid down for bedtime tonight, I'm gonna come out and try to do the second coat. They say that it covers about 300 square foot um, per gallon. I have five gallons, this is 1200 square foot. To start out, what I'm gonna do is pour some into the tray, grab the foam brush. I'm gonna go around all the spots, around the drain, around the door over here, and try to pretty much cut in everywhere around the main door, the uh, overhead door. I'll do that stuff, and then I'll break the roller out. They say when you do do two coats, you're supposed to do one one way, and then the second coat opposite way, so like perpendicular, it's supposed to cross, so that way it makes it even. So what I think I'm gonna do is the first coat, I'm probably gonna go this way, and then when I do my second coat, I'll just roll in, that way I'm working back towards the door. I'm gonna pour some into the paint tray and start putting the stuff on. All right, so I got one coat down and then I had to go wake the kid up. So I only had time to do one coat. It is now like four hours later. They say wait four hours until it's no longer tacky before you put a second coat on. I don't know if I mentioned it before or not, but they recommend two thin coats. You can see in some spots, I mean, it's a lot of light reflecting back. So there's a little bit of a sheen on it. You can see the reflection of like all the metal studs, but there's some spots where it's, shinier than others. But I'm gonna go ahead, throw a second coat down. I have, uh, I have my golf shoes on so I can walk on this. So if I accidentally step in spots where I already rolled it on because it's gonna be harder to see um, with it being a second coat, I'm, uh, I'm not stepping right on it. At least I got these spikes on the bottom of these golf shoes to kind of keep me up. So it's kind of like when people do epoxy, I guess. But yeah, I'll probably start another time lapse up and uh, start laying on the second coat. So I just got done putting that second coat on. 
Uh, she's still pretty wet. I just finished up. It is pretty late though. It's actually 11.55 right now. So I'm gonna call it a day, go inside. I'm gonna shut this place up, um, turn the lights off, turn the fan off, go inside, let it dry. It should be good to walk on here in four hours. I mean, it was about four hours from that first coat I put down before I put the second one and I could walk on it fine. It wasn't tacky anymore. But uh, I'll probably flip the camera back on. You're supposed to let this stuff cure for 48 hours before you drive on it. So I'll probably flip the camera back on 48 hours from now so you guys can see what it looks like fully cured and finished off. So I guess I'll see you in another couple days. All right, so it's two days later. The concrete is fully cured. The uh, seal is fully cured. I'm good, I'm out here walking on it right now, as you guys can tell. This is pretty much what it looks like. You got some of that like gloss reflection for the wall studs. You can kind of see the reflection from some of the lights. And if you look down at the ground, you can kind of see it reflecting up. But it gives you like that, it's not like super glossy, like there's water sitting on it, but I mean, there is a sheen to it. I mean, you can't deny that. I think it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. I think if we get like some RGB lights or something down the road, or like if we're out here watching TV and we got low light situation, it's gonna be the extra icing on the cake. I don't think I really needed to do this, but like I mentioned, like once everything's done, the ceiling's painted, the bathroom's in, all the walls are up, this is gonna be like that extra little thing, the extra mile that really makes this kind of look like a badass shot. And this stuff is pretty hard. Like, I mean, it feels like plastic. Like that, I mean, if I had to describe it, pretty much plastic over top of your concrete is what it feels like. And as you guys can see, I mean, there's, like it went down a little bit different, like depending on how the concrete was. Like this has the same hard feeling. We can tell right around the drain, it looks a little bit different, which I'm not opposed to it. I mean, it was only a couple hundred bucks to do this whole thing. And the five gallons with the power trowel of concrete kind of went pretty far. I still have probably, if I had to guess, two gallons of it left. So I mean, it went pretty good. The only thing I'm worried about is winter time when there's snow and stuff in here, a lot of water, it being slippery. Good thing is I have a couple gallons left. If I ever wanna put like sand or anything down or I could do flake, which I don't know if I'd do that because I like the way that the like wet concrete look is. All I have to do is pretty much clean it out, power wash it real quick, and then put down another coat and with it still being tacky or wet, I just throw my little bit of sand into it, give it a little bit of grip. It's gonna be hard to see on camera, but you can see like, the kind of like air bubbles from the roller, I think that alone is gonna give it a little bit of traction. Like, I mean, with sandals on, you're not gonna like run and slide on this stuff. But like I said, with water and snow on it, it might be a little bit different. I know some of you guys might be wondering, why didn't you do epoxy if you're worried about keeping the floors nice? Epoxy does look great. I think white epoxy in here, like a gloss white epoxy, look badass with everything else I have planned out. The thing about epoxy is the process to put it down it's a little more in-depth. I can't put it down, clean the concrete, and roll it on like I did with this stuff. Epoxy, you more than likely have to etch it or you have to get it ground down so that way it will adhere pretty good to it. The other thing is, is I'm working on this when the kid's napping or on a Sunday that I don't have to work. I don't have enough time to wait two days for the whole process to go down. Granted, I'm gonna take some time off work to put the walls and stuff up, but for the price point, I think this stuff was much better idea it's super easy to put down i did it all myself i mean i had a couple hours into maybe cleaning it and a couple hours into rolling it on other than that that's it so for the price i think this was a better choice i do really like the wet concrete look epoxy does look good but it's a lot more expensive where i only had a couple hundred dollars into this whole thing with that being said would i do it again um we'll have to see how it holds up i can't really give it a definite answer right now. Right now it looks great and it seems to be a super hard surface on top of the concrete, but who knows how it's gonna hold up. So I guess in the future time will tell if this is something that I would plan on doing again. I don't wanna let too much out of the bag, but I do plan on doing white walls in here. I think with the wet concrete look and the white walls, it'll look pretty good. If I were doing more of like a detail shop with like black walls, black everything out, I think I would do a lighter color concrete. I would either keep it the same. I know Ghost Shield makes a product that doesn't change the look of the concrete, but it will still protect all the same stuff that this eagle seal will maybe do something like that or just paint it white and then do this over top of it so that way it's a white like a gloss white but i think for this shop and what we're doing in here this was a good choice like i said we'll have to see how it holds up so the next step to the shop build we got going on here is gonna be painting the ceiling if you guys want to follow along as i work on this and you want to see how i'm painting the ceiling and what i'm doing to it and 
pretty much finishing the whole shop out, make sure you subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, but you enjoy this video, at least smash that like button. It's free, costs you nothing, helps out the channel a lot. I guess let me know if you guys think this is a good idea. Would you do this in your shop? Have you done this in your shop? If you have any recommendations on anything that I should have did differently, definitely drop that down below in the comments section. But yeah, until next time guys, I'm out. Thank you.